Hey, what's up guys? Before we get started with part two, thank you so much for watching. Please, please, please like, comment, and subscribe. Helps me out so much and for the YouTube algorithm so that we can create more videos for you and make your project better. Let's get started. So to get started with our API, we're going to, and you know, an API, we're just, um, we're just communicating with Amplify's database, which is DynamoDB, and then we can, you know, write data back and forth from uh, our application here, which you know is located in our files that we just created into a DynamoDB table. And then when we want to load that data, we just call for it back, and it loads straight into our application right here. So really easy uh, to use. So let's initiate that. So since our project is already running here, we can just do Control C and just like press it like two or three times and then it'll like stop the server and then if you go to your local host dash with the port 8080 uh, we refresh it it should not work anymore because our server is no longer running so that didn't work that's a, that's all good so now we want to configure it a little bit Oops. Uh, wire fell so to start and create API, we want to do amplify init, and that will initialize a new project. And you know, you can name your project whatever you want, an environment. I use Visual Studio Code. This is going to be JavaScript. Um, no, no framework today. Directory source path is source, yep. And our distribution path is dist. And then our build command, sure, sure. This is all very default. You just press enter a bunch of times. Of course, if you want to change some of these settings, just change it for yourself. Do you want to use an AWS profile? Yes, uh, default. And this is uh, just your authorization. So when you did Amplify Configure, this should be in there. So I'm going to say default. And if you named your profile something else, it won't be called default. It'll be what you called it in your um, in your Amplify configure. So yeah, so it's just gonna initialize initialize that Amplify project in there for us in our um, project. So let's just continue reading here while that is running. And you know, you can read all this. It'll tell you exactly how it works, but let's go to the next page. Okay, yeah, so that's all we have to do to initialize the Amplify project. Now, after the Amplify project is initialized, we want to actually start adding things to it. And that's, you know, the main point, right? We, we want to use Amplify, not Amplify, we want to use AWS backend resources. And we're using the Amplify tool to allow us to add that to our project really easily. So I just initialized our Amplify project and we want to do Amplify add API now. So let's do that. And then there's a bunch of configuration as well. So let's do GraphQL. Um, let's do the API name, API key, description, I don't know, DS, doesn't really matter. Expiry, you can do seven, I usually do 365 because I don't really care. Do you want to configure ad advanced settings for GraphQL API? Well, do we? Nah, sure, yeah, nah, yeah, okay, let's do it, just, just to check it out. Not additional, no additional auth types. Yes, conflict detection. Let's do auto merge, annotated GraphQL schema. Nope. Um, okay, yeah, so this is going to be your um, project schema with your models that you can, um, you know, insert into your D DynamoDB table. You can definitely change this in the future as well, but here we're creating our models. So this is, these are just template models, and it doesn't really matter which one you pick, but it just gives you a template so that you can insert data into your DynamoDB table, which again, you can change later. So let's just do the to-do model since that's a very simple one that is very easy to understand. And then do you want to edit the schema now? No, not necessarily, it's fine. Okay, yeah, so we just configured API through all those configurations. So now theoretically we have Amplify API in our project. And what we want to do is we want to, okay, so when we did our to-do model, this is this is what came out. This is um, inside our file right now. I mean, we don't see it, but it's there. Um, we have our to-do model, and then to create objects in our project so that we can um, throw it into our DynamoDB table in Amazon, we need to know the elements of our model here, and it's right here, which we can also change in our GraphQL schema in this uh, this file directory here so 
but right now all I want to worry about is to actually see that stuff so we're gonna do amplify push to actually throw it into our console so that we can see the stuff are you sure you want to continue yes I do uh, do you want to generate code yes I do JavaScript sure default do you want to generate update all possible yes I do are deeply nested we only have two there for our to-do model if you have um, a more nested uh, schema then you you do want to go ahead and throw in a higher number for that but right now we have a very simple uh, schema model so we only have two in there and then it's just going to create those amplify AWS resources for us in the back end and this amplify push does take a little bit so we want to continue reading here and then maybe I'll skip it a little bit if it doesn't finish yet but yeah the entire point of this is we want to communicate with Amplify um, AWS's DynamoDB table and to do that we need a schema so that it matches the tables inside of DynamoDB so that what it's doing now is it's detecting this schema right now, right here in our schema.graphql file in this uh, file directory and it's pushing that into the DynamoDB cloud which will then provision some new DynamoDB tables with these as columns. So in the DynamoDB column um, that we'll see later, they'll have an ID column and they'll have a name, co uh, name column and then a description as well. And then these exclamation marks just mean that for each object that we throw into the table, they're required. And then if it doesn't have an exclamation mark, it means it's not required. So basically, when we create a new to do which is like you know like in notes our to do list or something when we create a new to do it needs to have an id a unique id and then it needs to have a name it must have a name to create the item and the, but it does not need to have a description we we can leave that blank if we want that's just what the exclamation mark means so let's check on our amplify push still going um, yeah, we just went through all that. Okay, so yeah, it looks like we're done for now. Uh, we're just gonna wait for this to push. It does take a little while, so I'm just gonna come back when we're ready to go. I'll see you soon. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching part two. We have one more part to go before we finish this series on creating a new Amplify project. It's so worth it, guys. It's gonna be so worth for your application and you're gonna become so much, so much better developer so that you can create more uh, great and useful applications. Please comment, like, and subscribe so you can help me out. Um, I hope that we can, you know, have a great relationship and you can help me out. I'll help you out. You know, I'll make more YouTube videos for you as well. So let's do that. Like, comment, subscribe. Thank you so much. Let's move on to part three.